any surprises here at all? I guess not. Well, no. I mean, by the skin of the tea, uh, of our teeth, I think they made the right decision here. I mean, we, we could have lost two, two people moving that number up. We only lost one, so it stays at 4.6. If I was hearing Steve right, I think, I think it's, it's good that they are moving up that long-term projection of what the federal, a neutral federal funds rate would be. Because what have we learned over the last year? We've learned that the Federal Reserve can jack rates up to, you know, five and a, five and a quarter to five and a half. They can really slam the brakes uh, on, on the economy in terms of monetary policy. And the economy can take it. Yeah. And the economy can t and, and also inflation can come down even if unemployment is below 4%. So that says that, you know, maybe in the long run, uh, this economy doesn't need as much monetary accommodation. Maybe it's a pretty healthy economy on its own, in which case, why do you have such a low long-term funds rate? So it's a more logical projection today uh, than I think it, wa it was three months ago. How about that point, uh, Kristen, that the economy, and not just the economy, but the markets seem to have adjusted to the idea of fewer rate cuts and maybe a terminal interest rate that is a little higher than originally thought? I think, yeah, I, I took a couple of things away from what Steve was saying. I think the other thing to focus in on is the fact that the, the focus on the jobs market and employment, yes, the predictions kind of, there is a slight uptick in terms of the unemployment rate, but overall that job gains remain strong, which means that the Fed's real North Star in terms of whether or not we will see that rate cut is going to be in disinflationary forces continuing. In terms of why the market has actually responded quite well, that goes back to normalization and fundamentals. And so when we look at why is the market where it's at, it's due to earnings. We're expecting around 7.5% earnings growth um, this year, 15% over two years. That is actually quite strong given all of the tightening that has taken place. John, right now, if we look at the market reaction immediately, it is to the upside, ever so slightly so, but stronger, of course, to the upside than we were before we knew at least the Fed's decision with all, all the details still from the press conference. I mean, why is, is the market reacting as such? Is it just because there's no surprises? I mean, Steve said much of this was, was much as expected and there was not much change in the statement and the wording itself. I think there's two reasons. I think the first is that the consistency in keeping those rate cuts in the forecast, I think, is helpful. I think if the Fed was instead kind of skittish and got a month of bad inflation and adjusted their forecast, that would signal, you know, it would signal a little bit of unease on the Fed's part, and that would translate into investors being uneasy. So I think that's one. I think the second reason is that, you know, two weeks ago when Powell last spoke, you know, many people, and we were impressed by his consistency. You know, the time for Powell to really shock the market and change expectations, that's in the past. You know, that was necessary when we had a big inflation problem, when he really needed to do a lot of work to get that under control. But today, he can be more consistent. He can be more stable. He can be less surprising. You know, I think that was the message two weeks ago. That would be the message today. And I think that will be the message you know, over the course of the year is a more consistent, stable Federal Reserve. And I think that's actually helpful from a market's perspective as it allows investors to kind of set expectations and invest based on things like Kristen just mentioned, fundamentals, rather than trying to guess what the Fed's going to do.